One of the biggest dilemmas that feminists these days face is deciding whether or not they're actually brave women who don't need no man, or scared little snowflakes that do need men. If women are brave, would they actually be modern feminists? The things that modern feminists demand these days, like representation of women in fiction or even online harassment, those aren't really things that brave people complain about. If feminists are actually brave, they wouldn't be complaining about those little things and move on with their lives, or complain about things that are just more important. And no, I'm not gonna complain about the issues that women face. I'm not the feminist, but there has to be much more important issues in the world than people saying mean words to you on the internet, right? And you know what brave people on the internet won't do? They won't go after people who say mean words on the internet. They should have more spine and knows how to deal with those things. After all, they're brave independent women who don't need no man, right? In some ways, well, in a lot of ways, people have used feminism as a medium to hide something instead of actually advocating for the equality of men and women, because feminism is a very good label that you just slap to yourself. The reason is the dictionary definition of a feminist, as in someone who advocates for women's rights, instantly makes you to be a virtuous person by default. It's like slapping the label, I'm a good person, and believing that doing it somehow instantly makes you a good person. Now, since the label feminist sounds good, and by good, I mean good for normies that know absolutely nothing about how modern feminists work these days, some people that want to hide something in their lives use the label feminist to hide it away. Some women use feminism's brave, independent women's spirit to basically hide the fact that they're insecure, spineless, have low self-esteem, and generally not so confident in their life. Some women and or men use feminism as a way to make themselves to be a significant figure that fight for the greater good. Some people actually join feminism to advocate for the rights of women, but the things that they complain about don't really stem from the lack of rights that women have, but instead are just personal anecdotes of things that they personally find bothersome that the average person would just shrug off. Now I'm sure women have legitimate issues in the society, but why are the big ones from the mainstream media complain about the things that are just not so significant? There are various reasons and why people join feminism, and I do believe that there are some that joins with good intentions. But there are also those who joins because they feel morally superior to others. And unfortunately, a large portion of the people who join just so that they can feel morally superior are the people in power, like people writing for journalistic outlets, developers, CEOs, etc. To be honest, I don't particularly care in why you join feminism, I just care about what you're going to do with that label. What kind of rights would you advocate for? What goals would you accomplish as a feminist? But the things that you do with the label are just absolutely horrendous, which is why everyone despises you and everyone criticizes you. Male feminists, for example, good lord, how many times have it backfired? So I want to ask the question to feminists, if you guys really are fighting for the rights of women and you're brave individuals, then why are the things that you complain about makes you look like a freaking spineless coward? Spineless coward that needs the help of men. Hey dude, do this. The last resort for female gamers escaping online abuse. In a toxic environment of online gaming, women play incognito, pretend to be male, or say nothing to avoid harassment. So again, the question is, are feminist women actually brave, or are they spineless? Are feminist women only join feminism to hide their insecurities and lack of self-confidence? Are they doing all of these things because it's the trending thing right now? Or are they doing it out of peer pressure from their friends and that if they don't do that, then their friends wouldn't hang around with them? So many factors to take into consideration here, and so many hidden reasons and why they do such a thing. So let's get into reading the article, shall we? The article starts out by telling the story of Lena Van Deventeer on the time where she was sexually harassed online. She was playing Team Fortress 2 and once the players noticed that there was a girl in the room, lots of people become immature monkeys with uncontrollable dicks and go OMG girls OMG. To be fair, the game is Team Fortress 2 and it doesn't really invite girls that much so I would also be equally surprised to find girls in there. However, the mere act of my surprise is signs of my implicit bias towards women, and therefore I should look in the mirror to hide my misogyny forever. We're not allowed to have a surprise reaction towards women in video games. They're actually a regular occurrence in many games, you see, even if many statistics in the past have said otherwise. However, instead of muting the voice chat or the text chat in the game, she decided to quit the game entirely, especially after hearing someone masturbating and climaxing on the site of her username. Jesus Christ lady, you're making it as if you're playing with a serial killer. Recalling the incident, Van Deventeer, an award-winning game developer, writer, and lecturer at RMIT, tells me she put her prized headphones in the drawer and couldn't really look at them for a while. So, people say mean words to you on the internet, therefore I'm going to put my headphones in a drawer so that I can't listen to them. Wow. That's a rational reaction. Eventually, she decided it was time to get them out again. I didn't want that guy to run the show, she says. I'm a loudmouthed feminist woman, so I like to push back, but I don't always have the energy for that. 
Again, the question is whether or not feminists are actually brave, or are they just spineless cowards deep down? As you said, there are loudmouthed feminist women. You should be able to deal with these pesky men by just shouting at them and telling them to go fuck themselves. But you quit and gave up. Strong, brave, independent women, everybody. Van de Ventura is far from alone in experiencing this kind of harassment from men online. The website Fat, Ugly, or Slutty, for example, is an archive of the many kinds of abuse directed towards women who game online. Every message is the same, one woman writes. I'm always either fat and ugly or a slut. Posts are archived into one of these three categories, and women come together on the site to find humor in insult. You know what? I'm gonna take your last sentence and keep it somewhere safe. Are you really going to decide to find humor? If yes, then you wouldn't make this serious article. Women in online gaming communities engage in a variety of these creative resistance strategies to continue to, as Van Deventer puts it, love the gaming world even if you don't love the community, to hold on to it and know that it belongs to you as well. Absolutely! Last time I checked, gamers are human beings, and human beings are capable of emotions, including women. Our next step is just probably remove emotions entirely. I don't usually get a partner. It's kind of fun. Emotions are prohibited. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Next one, we're gonna dive into the story of Liliana Brownberger. She's a 32-year-old woman who works as an IT analyst. She's also playing Team Fortress 2 and sunk 700 hours of it in the past decade. Her story is less explicit but still proves that there is rampant sexism towards women in video games. At first, she was hesitant to jump into multiplayer and practice by herself before going online, something she says is such a female thing to do. Once I was online, I generally have a good time and dominate the public leaderboards, but the gamer is almost universally assumed to be a he, she says. People would compliment me like, hey, well done bro, hey dude, do this, just using male language. I never bothered to correct it because when you did, it would spark a whole unwanted conversation. And that conversation would go, I'm a girl. Oh sorry, I thought you are a guy. Yeah, that's fine, it's unusual to see women in Team Fortress 2 and shooters in general. And yes, it's unusual to see women in Team Fortress 2 and or shooters that are not Overwatch. Now just because it's unusual doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad or that it's wrong for you to enjoy this hobby. For God's sake, I used to love Barbie when I was in elementary school. I was also a Tumblr that loves to write fanfiction. Shut up. There was one time I did, and I was like, thanks, I'm a girl though, probably old enough to be your mom. And then someone else was like, me too. And then another one said, me too. And it turned out the whole server was full of women. We had just all assumed that we were dudes. My god, lady, did you just assume that the entire server is populated by guys? Again, there's nothing wrong assuming that this is the case. There are statistics that prove this to be the case, and looking outside the window, you'll see that most gamers are men. Is it wrong for people to assume things now? Part of the invisibility of women gaming online, says Bromberger, is the fact that men feel entitled to online space in a way that women don't. One thing I've noticed is that men feel a lot more disposed to general chat. They feel like they can go into these spaces and just talk it up, she says. By contrast, Bromberger observes that women generally don't use voice because those who did go on mic would get lots of negative attention. Lady, let me tell you that men also don't use voice chat and text chat in video games as well. The reason is because we don't want to be annoyed by freaking 12 year olds shouting faggot and making your mom jokes. This isn't an exclusively women thing in video games, and if you think that it is, there's something wrong with you. Caitlin McGrain, who recently completed a master's thesis entitled Being a Feminist Online is Exhausting, The Effects of Anti-Feminist Rhetoric in Online Spaces, says such experiences contribute to women feeling unsafe in online gaming environments. For a thesis, she interviewed women from communities such as Widget, Women in Development, Games, and Everything Tech. One of the key findings was that people didn't have to witness something in order to be affected by it. Okay, I have to admit, the widget abbreviation was pretty cool. But I want you to consider this. Imagine the internet as a post-apocalyptic wasteland where only the brave and strong can survive. At this moment, you are complaining that the place around you isn't safe and that you want to make it a safe environment for everybody. Well, you are right. They're not safe and there's nothing you can do about it other than be brave and deal with it because real life has people that you will definitely not like. But instead of being strong and not thinking too much about the messages on the internet, these feminists decide to make sure that the harassment on the internet is a serious thing. McGrain, however, shies away from describing these incidents as trolling. Often when we talk about trolling, what we mean is online harassment. By calling them trolls, we diminish the impact that it has. Brave, strong, independent women, everybody. Can you please make up your mind in whether or not you want to treat this as humorous or serious business? The entire article is treating this entire thing as serious business, but some feminists decided to treat it as if they're humorous. 
At this moment, I'm just starting to believe that feminism is just a front for women with low self-esteem issues to pretend that they're brave and pretend that they're significant and have a role in society. Not healthy to be pretending as someone brave when you are bothered so much by hate comments online you don't even bother wearing your expensive headsets. The next part is discussing the tools that they can use to curb these online hate machines. But before we go to that, they have to mention that they and their problems are not being noticed by Senpai enough. One of the key issues with multiplayer gaming online, says McGrain, is that the abuse is rarely taken seriously, even when women report it to the moderators. Women felt that the reporting mechanisms available were useless, she says. They felt that it wasn't going anywhere and it was a waste of time. Maybe you want to consider the fact that this happens to everybody and that the moderators cannot control what people say online? Especially with games like Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch that has millions of players playing online even as we're speaking, this is an issue that is way beyond the moderators who have to deal with millions of users reporting millions of users. Van Deventier has a similar take on reporting mechanisms available to women who game. I try and use the report function when I can, she says, but it's hard for women to know anything that is going to happen. You lose faith in them because there's not often follow-up. Some games have an algorithm that can pick up if they're using a slur, and they can be banned on the spot, she said. But things like get back to the kitchen and make me a sandwich don't get picked up because sandwich isn't a slur. Ah yes, detecting keywords regardless of context. That's never gonna backfire ever. As a game developer, Van Deventier argues that improving reporting mechanisms would be insufficient alone, and that cultural change has to be built into games from their inception. As developers, we often think of the player as singular, but we have to think about the culture we want to encourage around the game when it comes out, and that can inform us the kinds of moderation tools we develop, so that we're developers of culture as well as the game. That's a pretty scary statement. Culture is something that you cannot control. To think that you have the idea of controlling the culture so that it suits you is freaking terrifying. People are different. Individuals are different. Not everyone will be angelic saints when playing a video game. They can be absolute demons. You cannot control how people act. You cannot control how other people behave on the internet. You cannot control their interactions. The internet culture is something that just happens. You can't control control them. It's beyond your reach. It's like finding a way to control what memes are fresh right now. You can't. You really can't. Thankfully, the next person can answer the question and why gaming culture is what it is right now. Robbie Fordyce, a video game researcher in the Melbourne Network Society Institute at the University of Melbourne, agrees that focusing on culture is key, starting with the way games are marketed and sold. There's a well-documented particular kind of person who plays games, an easy-to-brand consumer project that you can throw flashy, misogynistic, hyper-masculine content at, and they'll swallow it without being particularly critical. So apparently the problem is the game and not the players. Well, in some ways you're actually correct, but even inclusive games like Overwatch, as revealed in my last video, have this tiny little problem of women and minorities just badmouthing each other. Again, human beings are human beings. They have mouths that they can use to badmouth each other. You cannot control what people can and cannot say on the internet. And if you put human beings in an environment where they have to fight each other, there is going to be toxicity. There's absolutely going to be toxicity. If the problem is with the video games, then the solution for this is none other than to not play multiplayer action games as they invite toxicity, or not to develop multiplayer action games as they also invite toxicity. So the best way to curb toxicity is to not have players in your games at all. Because every single one of those players is capable of trash talking each other. Anyone without exception. Sorry, but your game is not going to make much money from that. In terms of solving the problem, I don't know that games can do it, he says. I wish it was possible, but gaming is simply a hyper-intensified expression of a more general problem with toxic masculinity. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, women never contribute into the toxicity. It's always those pesky men. Always.